Today, I'm bringing you an authentic Puerto Rican recipe, sofrito, straight from my abuela's kitchen. We are celebrating not only a new recipe, but a milestone with Kenneth's Kitchen. We are featured on the YouTube shelves for Hispanic Heritage Month. Some of you may not know this, but I'm Puerto Rican, or Sorto Rican, if you will. And to honor Hispanic Heritage Month and my abuela, today we are making sofrito. How we got this recipe is we were decluttering in the house and we came across a very dusty box of books and binders. And while flipping through it, I came across my mom's recipe book, which included a note from my abuela. And on that note, she wrote her authentic sofrito recipe. As we were flipping through this book, we could see some recipes that were written clear in pen and some that were scribbled down on the back of letters or envelopes with pencil that are slowly fading away. So we're trying to save some of these recipes and bring them to you and just share some true Puerto Rican cuisine. Now sofrito is very simple to make. All we have to do is blend up these ingredients. If you're not familiar with sofrito, it is the base of most Puerto Rican cuisines. From arroz con gondules to pollo gasado and so many more. It is the bread and butter, if you will, of the flavor of Puerto Rico. Now this recipe brings me back to her kitchen and makes me feel connected to both her and my mother and just our heritage in general. When this sofrito is all said and done and it's actually getting used in a recipe, the smell the smell that comes from it is just amazing. It's one of my favorite smells and one of the things I remember most about my abuela. Let's make the sofrito, shall we? Vamos! Let's talk about ingredients for our sofrito. We've got some bell peppers here, which is gonna add sweetness. Our Spanish onions, which is gonna add depth. Garlic for that irresistible aroma. Cilantro to add some fresh herbiness. Salt, pepper, and cumin for a little flavor. And our pimiento stuffed olives for richness and saltiness. Let's get blended like me. Half white, half Puerto Rican. Sofrito is more than just a recipe, it is a tradition. This recipe in particular has been passed down from my abuela, my abuela's abuela, and my abuela's abuela, abuela. So you might have one family that doesn't use olives. We're using olives because our family has always used olives, but not in a traditional sofrito recipe. See how that's a little fun, family secret? Now, if we were in Puerto Rico and we were making sofrito, we would also add ají dulce, or sweet peppers, and racao, or the leaves of culantro. Culantro? Culantro? Now, for the Puerto Ricans out here who are about to roast me for the way I've made my sofrito, get the f out of here! <laughs> Uh, so frito can be made millions of ways and it all is dependent on what your family likes. So don't be afraid if you see a sofrito recipe that maybe doesn't look like this one, it's probably still amazing. Now let's talk about our cilantro for a moment. You wanna get rid of the stems of your cilantro because it will add a bitter flavor to your sofrito. So I just take it when it starts to lose its stimminess and get to the bush part, we just cut it. And there you go, there you have it. Bitterness gone. All bush, no stems. All bush, no sticks. I just like to cut my cilantro up a little bit more because if I leave it long and strandy, it tends to get kind of wrapped up in the blender. Now I like my sofrito to be just a little chunky. I don't want it to be completely liquefied and pureed. So I will take the heartier ingredients, the onions, the peppers, and do a quick chop real quick. And then I'll add the cilantro, the garlic, and the olives, the ones that are a little easier to mix up. Now after we've got the cilantro destemmed, prep all the rest of your ingredients and I'll meet you at the blender. All right, and depending on how big your blender is, it might help to do a couple of like blends as you're adding ingredients that'll create more space. So our first blend will include peppers, onions, and garlic. This recipe just makes me really emotional, you know? I bet my grandma cried like this when she cut six onions. <laughs> she probably did. She probably had it figured out. She probably was like, I've been cutting onions for years. My eyes don't even know how to cry anymore. You gotta remember, this woman was born in like 1920, right before the Great Depression. A mother of eight children. She was a rough and tough lady. All right, so we're gonna hit pulse just a couple times. Okay, a couple pulses should do it, and now you have enough space for the rest of your ingredients. The cilantro goes in. Again, one bunch without the stems. We're gonna do this jar of olives. 
with red pimientos stuffed inside of them. That is a Gonzalez trade right there. And we're going to do them with no liquid. I'm not gonna just pour this in there because then that will really liquefy our sofrito. I'm gonna like pour this into a strainer and then I'll pour the olives. And lastly, some flavor. Two teaspoons of black pepper, about one to one and a half. Cumin and salt to taste. Oh, excuse me, my grandma's verbiage was salt to imagination. I like that. And now we blend into sofrito. We're just gonna keep hitting the pulse button. I'm gonna hold it for a little bit, let it settle. Hold it for a little bit, let it settle. Until it's a nice consistency. All right. I'm just gonna push the top ingredients. This is more just because I'm trying to get the ingredients to blend evenly. Uh, and my blender is just a little crowded. Baby, baby, we got so frito. Mm. It is so freaky though. There you have it. Homemade sofrito, just the way my abuela made it. This is really a simple sofrito recipe that you can use in a variety of dishes, or you can even freeze it and get a little taste of Puerto Rico whenever you're getting that itch for Puerto Rican dishes. You can use something like this. You just pour it right in there, freeze them, and then after a couple hours, you can pop them out throw them in a Ziploc bag and keep them in your freezer to use whenever you're cooking something that you wanna add a little bit of Puerto Rican flavor to. Now you can use this in a variety of dishes and all you need to do is add it in there, saute it in some oil before you make your meat, your stew, your soup. This is your base flavor. That has been a simple sofrito recipe just like my abuela made it. I wanna thank you for watching this video. It was fun to share a little bit of my culture, my heritage with you. And I wanna thank YouTube for featuring me on the shelves this month and specifically for featuring me for Hispanic Heritage Month. I couldn't be prouder of my background and I'm glad I could share that with you today. So thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button and comment below and let me know what your family puts in your sofrito. I'm curious. Peace out, homies. Peace out. Puerto Rican town down. That's a Puerto Rican lady from Atlanta. Where the players play.